Welcome to Otter Talk number 11, everyone, and happy, happy, happy 2021. Let's hope it's a fantastic year. Um, tonight, our Otter Talk is a walk down memory lane with our Otter Hound treasure, Arlene Smith. Um, Arlene is going to chat with us and give us some memories of hers. And if you have any questions um, at the end, we'll open it up to an open chat. If you have any burning questions during it, you can enter it in your chat button on the bottom of your screen. Um, and you can direct those to Carmen and Carmen's going to harvest those questions um, as we go. And if you don't know who I'm, I'm Robin Keeling and Carmen, my co-host, Carmen Lang. That's me. Hi. Happy New Year, Carmen. And to y'all, so, If you are new to Zoom, I'll just go over a few control um, things. You should, on the bottom of your screen, depending on what kind of device you're using, you mm -hmm. should have a mute button and a stop video button. Uh, if you need to leave the chat to let your dog go or whatever, you can always stop your video and then start it back up again. You have a chat function. Um, you have a um, reactions button where you can clap or... Um, Let's see what else. I think you can smile and stuff. Um, raise your hand, clap, thumbs up, heart, stuff like that from your reactions button. And also on the of your screen, you should have an icon that allows you to change your view. So you can look at it from a gallery view where you see thumbnail pictures of all of us or a speaker view where you just are focused on the one person who's speaking. So feel free to play around with that. Speaker view is always cool because then you actually can focus on who's talking. But totally up to you there. With that being said, Arlene, thank you so much for coming tonight. We are all very, very happy to have you here. And I would like to start out tonight by asking you, how did you get started in otter hounds? Well, in most unusual way, I've grown up with dogs, as did Doug. However, after we were married and moved into our home, which is on a cul-de-sac with a great big backyard, we knew we wanted the dogs of our own. Well, we started out with bassets. Well, the bassets really were not for us. We found that out. But they did live good long lives, but we had said, and our son, Ted, whom you will meet from time to time, had said a big dog this time, Mom, a big dog. So we went to the International Kennel Club show, and we looked at, separated, looked at all the dogs, came back for a Coke, and said, I've got just the dog for us, and it's an otter hound, and we all had agreed on it which as a family, we rarely did. But anyway, Louise Deshawn was there. And when I was speaking with her, she said, well, Jill Battenberg from Minnesota has brought down her litter with um, uh, Christy. And so they were behind Donnelly Hall, right next to the railroad tax. And when I went down, Doug and Tad were with me. I made eye contact with McDuff immediately and decided that this was the dog that we should have. So Jill was very forthright. She said, Arlene, I feel he's going to be a very good dog. But if you decide not to show him, by all means, have him neutered because he's going to be one big horny male. Well, when Doug took him to the vet, the vet said, Doug, I'll not do it. Either you show this dog or I will. He felt so strongly about, and he didn't really know the breed. He looked it up, but he didn't really know it that well. But anyway, as it turned out, and this is what you all have found, I'm sure, or will, the people that come into your lives, once you own an otter hound, are forever your friends. And there was a lady, her son is still showing Great Danes, who lived in Manhattan, Illinois. And she saw McDuff and she told Doug that she would meet him halfway. They lived in Manhattan, Illinois, were in the Heights. And she met him at a gas station almost every Sunday to teach Doug how to show McDuff. Well, when McDuff finished, there was no one more proud than what Pat Lawrence was. And even her son, Jeff, still remembers it, still showing Great Danes reading them and doing a beautiful job with them. But it's those kind of people that have come into our lives all along the way that have made this odyssey 
just a joy, a true joy. So with McDuff, <clears throat> excuse me, with McDuff and starting out, we went to the international and he loved little children in strollers because he could lick their lips and their cheeks from the peanut butter. <laughs> and friends remembered him then from year to year. And he was back there several years in a row. Well, as it turned out, the local Chicago Tribune did a cover story on him, which at the time, Bill Saloff, who's now a judge himself, was showing him. And I took the picture to Louisville a couple of years ago, and Bill said, Arlene, can I have a copy? My children don't believe that I ever won at the International Kennel Club show, but they did. And that was the way we really got started in it. Well, it turned out that when it came time for a breeding, Nancy Wallens and her husband talked with us about doing what she called at the time an outcross. However, it really was not. But the dog was from England. Her name was Mindy. And Pete, uh, Mike Ansel came over from England after the litter had been whelped. And uh, I think they were about three weeks old at the time. And I had made my choice of Phoebe. And he said, Arlene, you've made a very, very good, good choice. And it turned out to be absolutely the best choice in the world. We didn't know it at the time. We were just having fun with puppies more than anything else. But as it turned out, Phoebe became our best in show. She's a lovely bitch. And there is a funny story that goes along with the day that she showed. Dana Klein, who's now a judge, showed for it for me. And um, the um, she won the breed. And then when it came time to group, Dana had his own dog. And he saw the look on my face. And he said, don't worry, don't worry. Cindy is going to do it for you. And Cindy did, and she did a very nice job with it. And the judge gave her the uh, the group. So as it turned out, almost everybody stayed that had been at the show because an otter hound was that rare. Not only had they never seen one before, but along with that, never one that did that kind of winning. So when the judge had gone over them all, he walked to the table, marked his book, and he came back and he stopped before the audience and he said, I've shown and judged dogs for a long time, but I have never seen a bitch that has the qualities and the structure Otter Hound Bitch has. Well, I was standing up because I get so nervous and there was a woman, heavy set woman sitting in front of me and her son came up and he said, mom, we've got to get out of here. He said, we've got a long ride back to Missouri. She turned to him and she said, honey, I ain't leaving this place until that bitch takes it all. And that was prophetic because she did win the show, her first best in show. And Doug was flying, he was, he is a pilot, but he still was flying that afternoon. But there was another show the next day. So as we were walking her over, uh, the judge from that had given her the best came up behind us and he said, I want to see what Colonel Wally Paday does because I think she is, just as I said, a lovely, lovely bitch. And Colonel Paday also gave her the breed and the group. But the thing that was so important, and that's why I keep coming back to this thing about friendships and the people that you meet. In Louisville, the following March, one of the judges for otter hounds got a call in the middle of the night that there had been a death in the family. So she left and had to leave. But the superintendent came to me and said, you know, we'll get a bear judge for you. And I said, no, you won't. I'll get my own judge. And I knew Colonel Paday was there. And I wanted very much for him to see Phoebe now. And then 
the super said, now remember to tell him it's only $3 a dog. Well, when I talked with Colonel Paday about doing it, and I said, oh, they want me to tell you, Colonel, it's $3. And he said, this is not about money. This is about dogs. And I found out later, she did well in the, in the breed, but I found out later from Esmeralda Carmichael that he had something positive to say about every dog that was in that ring, every otter hound. That's rare. You rarely will see something like that, but it means so much to someone who's exhibiting a dog. And so, as I say, he's now a very, very elderly man. I don't know if he's as old as I am, which is 92. And I figure after all these years, if I haven't learned something about people and something about dogs, then I've been living in a cave and I haven't been doing that at all. But that was the way the Odyssey began. There's also the funny stories about the things that did happen along the way, and those that were prophetic. And one of them is the Purina used to do a dog show of their own. And it was done in St. Louis. And I believe Diane Quist was there at the time and Louise was there and we were there. And as it turned out, it was the first time that Duff went over his sire, Boot. And Louise came to me with tears in her eyes gave me a big hug and said, Arlene, I knew it would happen one day. And I am so glad that it is McDuff. And that really cemented a friendship that lasted for oh so many, many years. And this is what everyone I think in our breed will find that these dogs are almost like a magnet where people are concerned. I have a strong feeling about their history Anyone who you know knows me for any length of time knows that I, I can't look at a dog without seeing that history. And I found an article, I've got, got it beside me, but I'm not going to read it right now. But the author of the article, who was from Great Britain, had said, there is no other breed on this earth that has been owned and loved by the monarchy of Great Britain than the Otter Hound. So you figure it went back to William the Conqueror. That's a lot, that's a lot of monarchy <laughs> through the breedings. And I think that too brings me to another story, which when the actually put into the, you know, save the breed type of thing, Captain and I, I'm gonna cry because it, it's so prophetic. But he had said, these are otter hounds. They will not hunt muskrats. And he decided that he would disband his whole kennel. Well, England then was this, how can kennel dogs adapt to home settings? Well, they needn't have worried because there is an otter hound in this earth that doesn't make the home the pack. So each of us who own are really part of their pack, not the other way around. And I think that we need to know it. We need to let judges know it. Many of them, when we've mentored and talked with them, have no concept whatsoever of what this breed is capable of doing. And we that are with it know of its scenting abilities, there was a young lady by the name of Carolyn Knapp who had bloodhounds and did a lot of search and rescue, but she got a, an otter hound and wanted to show it. And it turned out not to have all of the attributes that it, it should have had, but that didn't stop her because she trained him. And the dog would ride at the front of the boat when they were looking for the bodies in the water and the divers came to trust her completely. She was never wrong. There was only one thing that Carolyn asked, and that was that the families of the people that they found who had drowned not approach the dog. And that was probably, I think, done more because in their sorrow, 
they wouldn't appreciate the talent that the dog had to do that very thing. So there again, we have just begun to discover what they're capable of. Those that are tracking, those that are doing search and rescue, like Eileen Glennon, really know of it. And I worry sometimes about Eileen when these calls come in late at night and someone that has dementia or Alzheimer's has become lost, but her dogs always find, always find. And the police now in her area here in Northern Illinois are very much aware of it. But as I say, now that we're in this pandemic area, I think it makes it almost even more important that we have them, the love that we have. I know for a fact, having experienced it, dogs grieve. They grieve just as much as people do. And a lot of folks aren't aware of it. I was very much aware of it when McDougall passed away and within four months, his litter mate, whom he adored, they were both champions. And so, so when McDougal would come home from a show, Andrew would meet him right at the back gate and it would be like a tea party. Who did you see? did go? All the communication the two dogs. But when McDougall So a very big part of their life. So get McDougal. He had so many good attributes. But if I was asked by anyone which was the dog that made the most difference, it would have been the laurels that came with showing them some funny things. McDuff would have to have been that dog but it was for an entirely different reason. When Phoebe and McGregor had their litter, one of the pups got into an area that I was concerned about. And I went to approach the dog and McDuff must have picked up on the fact that I was worried. But he came up to me, put that big jaw of his around my hand, just held it as if to say, handle it. When you have much communication with a dog, it'll stay with you for the rest of your life. And I do feel that way, that he is still a very big part of our life. I don't know that you can see it on this very small picture, but it, he is right behind me on the wall. And he himself had brought so many laurels. We were at Westminster, and David Fry, who was the, was the announcer for the garden, had said, you know, this was an otter hound, this was, you know, and, and all. And then when it came to the group ring, because a bitch had won, and when it, the announcer for Wimbledon had been working with David Fry, and he said, where's my, my buddy? Where's McDuff? And David tried to kind of rationalize everything. But anyway, words which came out across the airwaves, my sister photographed it in California. And she said, I mean, the owner of that bitch will never be able to show it because all Bud Collins could talk about was McDuff. So anyway, I sent Mr. Collins a thank you note with a picture of McDuff. And about three weeks later, we get back to to McDuff Smith, care of Arlene and Douglas Smith, said, Dear Duff, I want you to know that I have hung your picture right next to Chris Everett. And the reason I had to write this myself is because the secretaries are all jealous of your haircut. I've kept that letter for all these years, which are over 30 now, because to have taken the time to have written back meant so very much to us, it truly did. But then when it came to McDuff's career and our friends in the East Coast um, really played a big role in this as well. 
and that was that they had wanted to breed McDuff to their bitch Amanda. And they knew we had never let McDuff with anybody overnight. We always had him with us, hotel rooms, some of them good, some of them not so good. But anyway, they said, it makes more sense, Arlene. And then to, to really clinch the deal, they took Doug and I to a lovely, lovely restaurant in New York. So we did a decide then that we would leave Duff with them. So that was, we left on a Wednesday. They took him home. And then on Thursday night, I get this call. And she said, Arlene, have you been, you know, criticizing Duff for humping? And I said, you doggone right, I have, he's a big dog. <laughs> and she's in the background, I could hear Donna, like, go Duff, go Duff, go Duff. <laughs> but the litter was lovely. And out of that litter came both a bitch and a male. We had the male, they kept the bitch. And the two of them won our national specialty in Nebraska. They were wonderfully beautiful dogs. And we've been very proud of it ever since. But it's been those kinds of things, as I say, that have endeared us to the breed. When we went to Louisville the very first time, the Otterhound Club was not yet involved, but Ann Deemer and her mom, Jan, were there. Ann had a, a bitch from England, and we showed together. And Duff won, and we went in for the breed and won that. And so when we got to the best in show, there was a terrier breeder from that area who was very good. He really was. And I knew deep in my heart he was going to win. And he did. He took, he took the best in show. But what was so strange about it was that our, on our way back to our setup, the judge was behind us. And he said, that is a fine looking male. What is he? He had judged him for best in show and never even knew what he was looking at. So that was how all of this began. And it's been an education process ever since. It really has. And you'll find that true. I think right now, and everyone knows I feel strongly about it. I don't think the American Kennel Club has done us any favors because they've grandfathered in a lot of handlers who really don't know the breeds, don't care about them the way their owners do, but have given them the opportunity to do a lot of judging before we got into the pandemic thing. And to me, that is not a slap in the face, but it certainly isn't helping anyone who's trying to breed good dogs. The thing of it is, is that years ago, most of the judges were coming from great big breeding kennels and had the opportunity to grow up and live with many, many different kinds of dogs. And two of them come to mind all of the time. The first one is well, well known. The second one became very well known. And that was Dorothy McDonald, great hound judge, actually beautiful to watch her work. And as I say, it was those people that when you got a win, you could really feel good about it because they knew what they were doing and what they were looking at. So hopefully, as I say, we'll in the future be able to turn this thing around so that we get those kind. I've had the experience of having to explain myself a couple of years back to our board about the fact that after all these years and all of the dogs, I personally have had the opportunity to go over that I'm looking at the structure of the dog. I am not watching the judge. That means nothing to me. But I do see a lot of good dogs that have not been rewarded as they might have been. My soapbox. Okay, so I'm, I'm open to any questions right now. As I say, you can tell mine has been a love affair and there's no question about that. What year My did last little story? Yeah. What year did you get McDuff, Arlene? What? What year did you get McDuff? 1986. He was born in 85, December of 85. We got him in 86. But oh. as I say, 
really was a unique and unique dog in so many ways. And some of that didn't show up until after he himself had sired a couple of litters. So as I say, he becomes very special. That is special. How many offspring did he have? Actually, let's see. He had the one with Mindy from, from England. Both of them having done very, very well. Um, I'd have to go back actually and, and check the record book because I don't want to give you any misinformation. But uh, the thing of it was they were large litters, but they all did well. There were none that were just pet, you know, what one we would call pet quality. They really had something to offer, and that made a big, a big difference. It truly did. Absolutely. How many, how many otter hounds have you had over the years total? Well, oh, now that reminds me of another story. You Doug and I would walk. <laughs> Doug and I would walk the dogs, five of them, and we'd walk them which was just across the street from us. And so the one day the gas meter rant man came in, did not close the gate behind him. And all five of them left. Well, Doug was in the house. He didn't know it. Had no idea until he heard the front doorbell ring. And one of the ladies that lives in the woods brought all five of them back together. They stayed as a pack often six different directions or five different directions. And all she said to Doug was, I think these belong to you. <laughs> and there was no question because they were well known in the neighborhood. In fact, one of the funniest stories, and I hope no one is a Jehovah Witness because I don't mean to embarrass you, but so often they can take so much of your time. But when these five dogs were fence, they never stopped. <laughs> they moved right on <laughs> because of the dogs. They knew that anything that size was paused because it had, so it was a six foot fence with an archer that went up to eight. And so it was a formidable kind of thing. It really was. So just lots, as I say, just so much joy, so much humor. Um, when we went, did the breeding with Amanda, we had told the people at the hotel, we always stayed right across from Central Park because it was so convenient to walk them. And then Doug would walk him to, um, uh, to Westminster. And then I would come in a cab with all the paraphernalia and we'll get, you know, get going that way. But the people at the hotel also thoroughly enjoyed having the dog there. So when Amanda was coming, we told them there would be another otter hound coming and that we were hoping to, to be a breeders and breed them. Well, they waited all day and they waited all day. Well, Amanda came, but she sat down. She really wasn't ready. And so the next day they said, you know, where, where is he? Where's, where's the bitch? And we said, she just wasn't, you know, she just wasn't ready in Chicago, the sky caps all came running because they recognized us and they said, where's McDuff? And we said, well, we've left him back in New York to be, you know, to the breeding. And the one funniest man out said, when Duff comes back and says, show me the broads. <laughs> It was those kind, as I say, the otter hounds are like a magnet. They really are. You get the funniest, funniest remarks, funniest expressions from people, you know, simply the way they see it and the way they relate to it. But it makes our, it has always made our life just a lot of fun. It truly has. So when Doug was on his last days, he was in hospice for five days and And both the night nurse and the day nurse waited for us. And she said, Mrs. Smith, I've got to tell you, my life. She said, the last thing I said to the commander, who was a commander in the Navy, the last thing I said to him was, Commander, is there anything more I can do for you? And he said, no, I'm, I'm going home. And she said, I will always wonder 
if he meant going home to the dogs or home to heaven, because he talked constantly, knew all the names. And when people would ask Doug, who, as I say, learned in a garage parking lot from Pat Lawrence, if he was ever nervous, and his remark was, no, I know I've got good dogs, anything other. So as I say, that I think it says a lot about Doug, a lot about how he related to people and how we feel about the dogs, without a doubt, we really do. So as I say, if there are any other things that, that I've missed or that I feel strongly about, I'll catch up with you. <laughs> I'll get to them eventually. But all of the people that I've I've met that we've worked with, I would have to single Bev Beren out from Canada. Bev entertained McDougal and I up in Canada. She put his Canadian championship on him. She is really the only person I've ever left any of our dogs with. But the litter that we got from McDougal and it was well worth it. And one of my favorite pictures was there was a, it actually started out as a mountain of garbage, I think, from what Bev had told me, but now had grass and grown over. And there is a picture of Jazz, the bitch, and McDougal at the top of that hill, looking out over the sunrise. And it is lovely, it really is. So it's moments, just little moments in time that make all the difference in the, in the world, it really does. And as I say, Eileen, Bev Krizia, uh, without a doubt, there's no question about it, that Louise had been a tremendous mentor. But I would have to say, when I have a question or when I feel, you know, if I'm on the right track, very often it's Bev Baron that I'll go back to. She's done it with England. She has been there. Several of our otter home people have been abroad. I haven't had that opportunity to, but I do know that Scotland meant a great deal. Our Bears Den kennel name is a town in Scotland that Doug's family is from or was from. He's the only one born here in America. And um, his uh, naval career and all meant a lot to him, but nothing like the dogs. They were they were at all, without a doubt. And when we finally got Sydney, who was the little border terrier, as I say, she grieved a lot when Doug passed away. But Molly came into her life, and Molly really, you know, they they bonded, and that was really neat. She lived to be 13 years old. Which brings me to another subject, and I won't dwell on it, but Macduff lived to be 14. McGregor lived to be 13. What are we doing today that has made such a difference in the lives that these dogs lead in terms of the length? I question it in my mind all of the time, and I read everything that I can about it. and. I'll give you a menu that I use with Molly right now. She's 11. I cook kale. I cook chard, Swiss chard. I grate ginger. She gets garlic. And then the chicken and livers. And she's doing fine. She can do two miles with Tad and not be winded at 11. So again, we've been very blessed, very lucky with the dogs. But I just feel strongly that they do need these same things in their diet as we do. That nutrition plays a big role in it. It truly does. There's some kibble, but it's it's not the major portion of what I feed and, and never would, truthfully, never would. So I'm open to any questions or any thoughts that people have. So uh, Ar Arlene, we do have a question in chat. Uh, uh, what was your greatest challenge with otter hounds? The reason we chose them? Um, yeah, or just, you know, breed in general, just any challenges well, you I had. Think so much of the karmi came out of going to the internationals, splitting up 
not trying to influence, you know, one another. And then the fact that when we met Louise, who was so knowledgeable about it at the time, and Jill, who was herself knowledgeable, uh, it gave us a lot of confidence. But I, I, I'm sure it was the hair, it was the ears, it was the big noses, everything about them just was a, a come on in many, many ways from the standpoint that they were unique. They really were. But all they had to do was give you one of those big paws and they had a friend for life. <laughs> so that's kind of the way it started, Carmi. It really did. Say when Louise, when Duff finally went over Hoot at that Farina show, as I say, the the tears in her eyes, but the fact that she was so gracious you know, about it from the standpoint she knew it would happen. You know, one day she knew that it would happen. But it, as I say, our, our relationship just became even more. So I said chicken livers. She just posted the question. Right. I said chicken livers. I, I'm not, I, you can use turkey, but I'm not that fond of it. But Truthfully, I would eat chicken livers and all of my Jewish friends eat chicken livers. And along with that, I think beef liver is delicious with liver and onions. So as I say, they should pretty much eat what I eat <laughs> as well. But as I say, you know, everyone kind of has to find their own way when it comes, but, but try it because it does make a lot of difference. And as I say, I add garlic powder as I'm preparing it in the morning. And now that Molly is a bit older, she doesn't like anything real cold. She would, unless it's ice cream, she would have it a little bit more on the warm side. So we feed blue, uh, froms and uh, the, uh, the blue canned. And they do one that's called Hunter Stew, which is excellent. She loves salmon canned salmon, and so we do that one. And I will frequently do the spinach and then I'll put in an egg or something to, you know, just sort of scrambled egg with spinach. I like that too. <laughs> so, but you know, it's nothing that different, but it isn't the way so many people approach feeding a dog, which is that you pour the kibble in the bowl and you leave. That's not the way it works around here. In fact, while Molly's eating in the morning, that's when I take my CBD <laughs> in my little teaspoon for my uh, for my legs. But as I say, the uh, there just are so many things that I didn't have to have someone, you know, throw a book at me to say, try this, because I have had good luck with it. And that's kind of validated why why I've done it that particular way. But uh, as I say, if there were anything that I wish we could have done, but there wasn't the time at that time with showing, and that would have been to work with search and rescue, to work with tracking, and uh, maybe with another puppy. <laughs> There's that possibility. So we'll see. We'll see. I, um, I have friendships with Ann Deemer and Jan that meant so very, very much to me. They truly did. Because we showed alone, you know, at the very beginning, because before the Otter Hound Club, you know, actually became an issue and uh, was in existence. But um, those friendships are long and, and loving and, and very important to me. They really are. So it pretty much sums it up, as I say, we're very fortunate, I feel, to have this breed. We really are. And it behooves us to take good care of them, without a doubt. So we'll see. Time will tell. I have one last thing for anyone who's doing any breeding right now. And that is, you know, people had said, Arlene, why didn't you ever take any sperm, you know, from McDuff? When he, when he did so well, you know, and made such a name for himself. And what he had to offer. But we learned from people who were in agriculture and their thought was you breed the best to the best to get better. And our thought from the very beginning 
that with every otter hound that we had, that was what we were doing. But as we got older, then we realized with McDougal, McDougal at nine and a half won Louisville, and Kiki Lamb, I was mentoring, and Kiki Lamb came to me and she said, Arlene, go hide. The judge really likes McDougal. And I said, Kiki, he's being kind. He's a veteran. He's nine and a half years old. She said, do as I say. The garbage can's over there. <laughs> you don't know where it is. <laughs> and I did. I excused myself. I went to hide behind the garbage can. And he did indeed give it to McDougal. And when I thanked the gentleman, he said, my dear, this dog could go out and hunt today. I can't think of anything any otter hound owner would rather hear than those remarks that a breed that went back to William the Conqueror was still able to do the job. It means a lot, it really does. So we'll, as I say, there's, there's just so many people. Your mom and your mom and I go way back as well. Nancy's been a real, real trooper. And then, as I say, my friendships, along with Eileen and, and Bev Krisha, Bev Byrne, uh, and I'll, I mentioned someone else too, Rusty Mellon. Rusty had been a friend and for so long. And when we were, I believe, in Wilmot, Doug had had a lot to drink and I knew it. And he's, he's just said, Arlene, back off a little, back off a little. And I said, I can't do it. I just can't do it. He means too much to me. But he cared. And that meant a lot as well. So there again, you know, just different people. Some of the old pictures are just so, so important to me. I've got one that I can show everybody, but it's got a story in itself. And that is that this is it. Now that is Macduff, oh. and that is the puppy MacGyver. A little bit higher and a little bit to your right. To my right? right. Yes. A little bit more right. A little bit more right. A little, a little bit, bit higher. Higher. <laughs> there. there we go. All Woo. right. This was done by the same Russian sculptress that did the Macduff on our trophy. Her name was Marina Ostrakova. She herself had Borisoys. She was visiting in our country. And the gentleman that had given Kate and McGregor the win at the Nebraska National had come to be friends with her. And she came to Chicago and we were at Rosemont. And she asked if she could photograph the dogs because she, there was something she wanted to do. And this was it. And this had become, we used it in our ads for a long, long time. But as I say, she's just a brilliant, brilliant lady. The, uh, the detail, the big noses, the ear set, all of it is there. The tongue hanging out <laughs> that often goes goes with it. So, but when it comes to just otter hounds being otter hounds, yes, our dogs had that opportunity as well. And this one will show that. Can you see that one now? Uh, a little bit to your left. There you go. All right. Now that is McDuff and MacGyver. And that was just coming out of the creek. That's just down the road from us. Oh, can you scooch it a tad bit to your right, Arlene? <laughs> Sorry. As I say, you know, they really, they they lived a, a, a very doggy life. <laughs> it wasn't just all shows and, you know, that kind of thing. Those were the special experiences. And sometimes those were the experiences that really surprised us. Eileen and I had flown into New York for Westminster, and um, we stayed in a very small hotel and very near Bryant Park because it was a good place to walk McDougal. And anyone who's been to Westminster knows it's a long, long day and everyone is tired. So Kiki said to, to me, she said, Arlene, if, if Doogie will do a dump, 
just put them in a cab and you know, get back to the hotel. We'll bring the crate because it was, you know, the one day show. So I did just that. Dookie had already fallen asleep with his head on both pillows. And I hear this raucous laughter in the corridor. And I opened the door and there were the two of them just laughing their heads off. And I said, what is so funny? She said, Arlene, we had the crate. This drunk came up to us and said, where's the dog? And they said, he took a cab. She said, the guy looked at them like they were, like we were nuts. But those were, the, again, as I say, the kinds of things that happened. Another time, I usually would have the, the um, livery pick us up in New Jersey rather than, you know, flying into New York itself. And the, the gentleman that came was Polish. And he said to me, if I come early to pick you up on Wednesday, will you take my picture with him? Meaning McDougal. And I said, of course I will, which I did. I sent him the pictures. He sent me back a recipe that his wife made from Poland. So as I say, I still have it in my my cookbook. So different things that happen that just really are fun. The, that's the fun of it. In fact, Eileen and I were coming back and we're ready to take off. And all of a sudden it is, Mrs. Smith, will you please come to the front exit? And I thought, oh dear Lord, what, you know, what's happened now? Well, as it turned out, they couldn't get Duff in the, into the plane. Well, he'd gotten in in Chicago and there hadn't been any problem. And it was the same kind of a plane. So anyway, Eileen and I, Eileen, we got Duff out. They put the crate on the plane and then took McDuff on the plane. When we got back to Chicago, was Duff was on the ground waiting for us because they knew how to handle the big, the bigger dogs. But just funny things that, you know, that did occur, that did did happen. And you all, you're still so young, honey, that you've got all those ahead of you, yet you really do. So as I say, I, I wish you all those kinds of a journey on your odysseys with the otter hounds. Because to me, when they say that dog is God spelled backwards, I sincerely believe it. Un, unforgettable love, and they just really, they forgive so easily. They really do. And we as human beings ought to be the same <laughs> without. It. So as I say, it's been an odyssey, but one that I would not have traded for the world. Not anywhere along the line. I really would not have. The uh, We're fortunate. We're fortunate to have a breed that people can relate to, that ask about and are interested in. And um, I think we're all pretty special, <laughs> I really do, without a doubt. So I'm here, I, I'll answer any questions you might have or that anyone in the club or at the meeting tonight would have. Cindy uh, has a question, go ahead, Cindy. Hi, Arlene. Hey, Arlene, would you, uh, grant us your recipe for your ingredients and such um, for your feeding, because many people have been asking about that. So, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be tonight, but something that you could um, possibly even send to Robin or send to Carmen, and then um, we can get that out because, you know, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. <laughs> Well, I love to cook. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Tad just informed me that the light bill has gone up because I have grow lights on a lot of the herbs and plants, you know, that I'll be taking back outdoors in the in the spring of the year. But um, there are several things, and and one of them I'll, I'll share with you. It's not in the cookbook, but it is for gumbo, and I love a gumbo on a cold winter's night. <laughs> I really do. But as I say, I've just feel so strongly that a lot of what I am today, health-wise, I really contribute to a lot of the herbs, fresh vegetables, and the fact that I enjoy vegetables. And so don't be afraid of them. They, even the ones you don't like can be made to 
taste good if you know the right things. And then I see Sonia made one too. What was hers there? What did she say? Let's see here. Thank you, Arlene, for sharing your stories. It was, I didn't get to get that last part in. It's wonderful. Did you see it, hon? Times. Right, let's see. She said it was wonderful to hear about all your wonderful times. And then uh. Joe said, thank you so much for Arlene, for your positive support of our wonderful breed. And um, Sarah said, Rusty loves you lots, Arlene. Thank you for the trip down memory lane. Hugs and kisses from your howl away friends. And then on your um, recipe of what you feed your dogs, Marie asked, is it chicken or chicken livers that you feed? Um, both. I know garlic. It is both, but, not, but neither raw. I, I know that they really push a lot of raw, but to me, um, I don't trust a lot of the raw things until I've cooked them and I'm sure the bacteria is gone or dead or whatever they do do. No, I, I, do, I do cook everything from that standpoint. Other than, as I say, the vegetables, I do raw zucchini and I do raw honey crisp apples. Molly loves them and just grate them, you know, over the, the, the feeding bowl. Yeah, she, she can almost take over the first layer of stainless steel on that bowl when she likes something. <laughs> she really does. But it's, it's a great way of doing it. Just try it. You know, try it with, with one or two vegetables and see what you get. Barbara Horrell told me that her dogs really love carrots. So oh. there's another, you know, another possibility that oh. one can add to their menu. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and then, um, uh, Katie, right? Or go ahead. Go ahead, Carmen. You be it. I was yeah. gonna say we, we have we have another comment. Uh, Katie Wright would like to say you are simply amazing, and I happen to agree heavily with that. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's see. I've lost your picture, Robin. So let me see what I have to do here to get back to you. Let's see. Back to the meeting. Okay. While you're doing that, I want to ask you for Marie. Um, Marie wants to know where you live in Chicago or what area you live in Illinois. We're actually in a most unique place. We can be on I-80, which will take us into Iowa and Colorado in uh, you know, a very quick time, or we can go east and that will take us down to Louisville or out on the East Coast. So it is a rather unique spot. We certainly hadn't thought of it when we bought the property. We just like the idea that it was on a cul-de-sac, didn't have a very big front yard, but we've got a great backyard. And that was a good selling point. The only thing was the people had, that had purchased it originally had put in a pink bathtub. I'm still living with that darn bathtub. <laughs> pink, it's not my color. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Any other things that, that one would like to question? Here are a couple other comments, Arlene. Bev said, Arlene, thank you for trusting me and allowing McDougal to stay with me. I can find those photos and post them in the Honor Home Lovers. That would be great. And let's see, Karen O'Connor said, many thanks for sharing your stories and being such a wonderful steward of the Otter Home breed. Lovely. Ooh said, Arlene, thank you so very much for talking about your experiences with your hounds over the years. It's so good to see you. So, and if anybody else has any questions, feel free to unmute your microphone and ask away. We'll have some open chat. So anybody that has any questions or comments, feel free to unmute and speak up. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, Arlene, this is Jody and Steve Persky. Remember uh -huh. back KC shows in Chicago? Well, both Doug and I did grow up in, in this area. Doug was, grew up in Harvey. As I said, he was the only one here born in America. His family were all from Scotland. And I grew up in Riverdale. And as I say, we met in high school. And he was a... Um, Body, uh, not a bodyguard, but a call guard. And I worked in the bookstore 
And his friends always teased him about how many pencils he had to buy in order to get a date. <laughs> but as it turned out, I knew that he loved the Navy. I knew that he also had, was a lifeguard at the Chicago Athletic Club. And he made many, many friends there who were very, um, very much uh, aware of Doug and his love for the Navy. And so several of them really were, if he had trouble with a course or a class, they'd send him books that they were going to get him through no matter what. And he never forgot it. He really didn't. So there again, as I say, his personality, and he had a lot to learn when he came into a marriage with me because my, my family were all musical and singers. And that part of it, Doug was always off key. <laughs> so it took him a little while, but we got him back on key and that worked out just fine. But he and I were married for 66 years. And uh, as I say, we get on the the highway and especially going to Indiana and we'd sing back home in Indiana and that kind of thing. And it was always, it was a joy. It really was. I have told people, I am so blessed. So very, very blessed. I truly am. And still enjoy those things. I, I almost wished I could have called everybody the other night because WTTW did the only concert that Horowitz ever did in Russia when he went back. And I loved what they said, that he at that time would only eat two things for a meal. And that's the only meal he had every single day, Dover sole and asparagus. And I thought, that's not a bad meal at all. I could do that one <laughs> very easily. But as I say, between the, the music dogs and sometimes I think the dogs were a little hard on my family. Because if it were Mother's Day and there was a dog show, my mom would always kind of give me that look, like, you know, which was more important. But on the other hand, she too loved the dogs. And so there again, as I say, when you grow up in that kind of atmosphere, though, it, it gives you a much more, I think, optimistic approach to life and to what can happen. And that's what I've tried to maintain. It really is that... Uh, it means a lot to me to have had the opportunity to met, met the dogs and known them and shared so much of my life with them. So each one of them will, Doug is buried at Amer uh, Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery. I will be buried there too. But Tad will have the opportunity to choose the urn. And I have all of the remains of all of the otter hounds. We'll all be buried together. Oh. So there, as I say, the, the odyssey will have ended, but Ted loves Molly, and I know that he'll carry it on. He'll need a little help, but he will carry it on. There's no question about it. So with that thought in mind, as I say, I think that you find it's almost contagious when you own an otter hound. You can't just have one, <laughs> and then you have to have a second one. And most people, I think, end up doing just that. I know the Devlins certainly have, the Follets have. It's not unusual. It really isn't at all. But we've got a great board that's really working for us and, and with us and new people that have come in and found that they we have something to offer. Those are, those are important things. And certainly I'm so hopeful that by the time nationals come in, Labor Day that we'll all be able to be there, not wear masks and enjoy one another's company. So that's, as I say, it's been an odyssey, but one that I've thoroughly enjoyed. The sad parts and the great parts, and they've been both, my, more than my share. So any other questions? Joel, did you I have one, Arlene. What's that? You, you've been in the breed so long and you've always been so positive with, with people. Um, what are the things that you do with judges education when you're talking to the judges? What, do you, what are the things that you point out about the breed that the judges need to know, especially the ones that aren't really hound familiar? 
I didn't hear all of it, so that's why I'm just hesitating. Can you speak up just a little bit more? I said, you know, you've always been so positive with, with people that you've come in contact with that own the breed. And with judges' education, what are the things that you try to convey to them that, that points out the, the positive aspects of the breed and what they need to look for? Oh, my. I, I think that dogs bring out the best in people. And if they don't, those people shouldn't have dogs because dogs are forgiving, dogs are loving. Uh, I can't even look at these these commercials they're doing for, you know, the um, the various dog clubs and dog concerns. It, it's it's a unique experience. It's not for everyone. And I think it's important that people realize that if they don't have the, the time or the attribute of sharing love, because it is a sharing responsibility, both ways are not in a position. I think that I've read more articles within the last three weeks or so about the fact, the role that dogs have played in people's lives during this pandemic that people who previously, because they know that there's a, a lot of depression, but when you have a dog, you're much less apt to have that sort of feeling because that dog is gonna do funny things or it'll play a ball game with you or it'll, it'll play hide and seek or you know go find whatever. There are a lot of opportunities that way. And yet when it comes time to go to bed at night, Unlike some children, you know, they're not going to be bothering you or anything else. Most of our otter hounds would love to start out in bed with us, but they get much too warm. And before you know it, they were, you know, laying on their own beds or in the pads in the, in the living room. So there again, as I say, it, it doesn't take a lot to read a dog, you know, at all even with dogs that you meet on the street. You know, some of them just will do circles with the joy of seeing another person right now. And I've seen that happen too. So there again, it's just, I think, meant to be that people who own dogs and love them, that they're, they're just really unique in what they have to offer the dog and what they will accept from the dog. So a dog that may seem overbearing to one person would just seem, you know, like a lover's delight to somebody else. So it's 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 a, a process. I think starting children out young, though, makes a world of difference. I really do. The very fact that, that Ted feels so strongly about the breed he was the first one on the ride home from Donnelly Hall in Chicago with McDuff as a puppy who said he's a mellow fellow. And he did forever remain a mellow fellow. The, uh, there were, were funny breedings. I mean, when Bev and Eileen, uh, Bev, uh, Krizia and Eileen were here, it was raining out and <laughs> they were sitting underneath the evergreens waiting for this breeding to take place. And so there again, you know, there aren't a lot of people that will do that in the rain. They'd say, forget it. You know, they'll, we'll pass this one up. But you no, know, it's something you just have to, I think, have to feel strongly about. And I did. I mean, as I say, grew up with several different breeds. The first one were German Shepherds and not the kind today where they their rear ends are down on the ground. But then a, a um, Boston Terrier, then a wire-haired terrier, and then a Boston Bulldog. This was just growing up that I had that opportunity. So it's, it's been a passion, but it wasn't until I saw McDuff. And when I say made eye contact, there's no other way of putting it. This young pup and I really did make eye contact. And for all of his life, it was that kind of a relationship. 
The only thing we couldn't do, and I admire people who can have their dogs eat together, but we never did. I never wanted to put them into a situation where they had to feel they had to compete with one another because that would not have satisfied it at all. It really wouldn't. But I also think so often that the very fact that people today have that option of, you know, of storing the, the sperm, of having it for future breedings. But we went by the old e edict, you know, of you breed the best to the best to get better. And it was our wish and our hope to do that, to get better as we went along. So I remember when they took the, uh, the sperm from McDougal, there were 38, 39 straws. That was unique at that particular time to get that many straws. But the bitch was, a, was a, our bitch, Kiwi. And so that made a difference. So, but Sarah and, and Rusty are leaving. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you for attending. Would love to see you, hopefully in Labor Day. I'm counting on it. Take care. So other than that, as I say, I've enjoyed this evening so much. I truly have. Just seeing your faces, just seeing people without a mask, seeing a smile, all of that has made such a difference. It really has. I was worried about it because I'm not a, a, a geek when it comes to the computer or anything else. Robin can vouch for that, but, um, but it's been well worth it. It truly has. And I wish you all well, just the greatest new year and that we will see one another in Ohio over Labor Day. We adored having you, Harleen. I'm gonna tell you a few of the other comments that you may have missed. Um, as people were having to leave, uh, Mark Williams said, have to run. It's been an absolute delight to hear from you, Arlene. I met you for the first time in Louisville a couple years ago now. Take care, everyone. Good morning, right. Uh, Marie said, thank you for a fun evening. I need to leave now. Um, Terry Kelly Wallace said, thank you, Arlene. Loved hearing about your experiences with the breed, and it was great meeting you. I hope to meet you in person one day with my two otter hounds. Cindy said, must hop off. It's always a pleasure, Arlene. Take care, everyone, and thank you for taking the walk down memory lane with us. Sarah said, thank you for a great evening. Marilyn said, Arlene, I want to be you when I grow up. I second that. <laughs> I want to be you when I grow up. I third that. That's, that's wonderful. That really is. And that truly is. I, I don't know anybody here that doesn't want to be you when we grow up. <laughs> Your elder woman, you, you rocked well, it. As I, optimism is a, is a, a good um, attribute. <laughs> one of my favorite human beings on this earth for real i i just adore you well i can't thank you enough because you truly had to work with me on this since i was so unfamiliar with it but i'll tell you when i found out that microsoft had zoom and we're cutting out you know the 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 big zoom it really did annoy me i mean i left calls must have left four of them for them yesterday because I, to me that was not playing fair it really wasn't and it was worth every second i you know what i appreciate you hanging in there i appreciate tad hanging in there and it was worth every second and I'm, I'm so thrilled that we could do this tonight well that we could do it that's for sure yeah. and maybe and there'll be other opportunities to robin really you know yeah. i'm sure but i i'd like to know now i mean do you have any more scheduled right away yes we do we do, and I'm going to run through those next. If anybody else has any questions for Arlene, stay tuned. I'm going to give a couple little ads, and then if you have any questions, we'll come right back to more questions if you want. But we do have more Otter Talks coming up. We have one on February 9th coming up, and that is February 9th. And I can text this to you too. February 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so 7 o'clock Central Time. Right, we are 7 Central. We're going to have a presentation by the um, uh, guy, I don't, I don't remember his name, I'm sorry, by the AKC Canine Health Foundation um, on all of the current and upcoming health initiatives that they have going on. 
and then on February 21st, time to be determined, and that's not set in stone yet, Bavirin, my buddy and your buddy Bev, is going to have a, um, uh, be a panelist for us, and uh, we're going to talk about grooming and care and maintenance of otter hounds. Not necessarily like show grooming and stuff like that, but just your everyday, you know, how to keep your otter hound in good shape, and we're going to rely on experience on that on February 21st and then in March we're gonna um, ask our friends Becky and Eileen to do a encore presentation of their AKC uh, presentation on the history and breed standard that they gave um, I loved that presentation so we're gonna ask them to do that for us and Eileen has agreed and Becky um, just heard about that for the first time today so Becky uh, is not on this call but <laughs> Becky <laughs> you're gonna be doing one in March um, and then in April we're gonna have one on um, obedience and rally and uh, showmanship that date has not yet been determined but Diane Quist is um, agreeing to do um, some information on what she's done in rally and obedience and then we're just going to have right. some on that and if anybody out there ever has any information ever that they would like to share with the community via an otter talk all it takes is one little click of an email to carmen or i and say hey <laughs> always always would like uh, information from anybody. It's just a fun way to share with the community and it's a really nice outreach thing and it's fun for everybody. So if anybody has any information, don't be shy. We'd like all the help we can get. And also mm -hmm. on this topic, um, I want to let everybody know that they're, all of our Otter Talks are always um, posted on YouTube as a recording. So we have a little library going on there with all of our... Very good. As I told you, with Bev Baron, we ultimately went to YouTube and Facebook and we're able then to work with, you know, with my big computer. And um, my next computer will definitely be a Mac because this has been one heck of an experience. And without your patience, Robin, I don't know what we would have done with it. Actually, I have one more picture I can, can show you. I don't know if you can see it. A little to your right. There you go, right there. Perfect. This is McDougal. And Caitlin has just contacted me to do a breeding with him. And so that we're hoping, you know, will come to fruition. And maybe then I'll be able to get another puppy. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. But McDougal, as I say, is a, is a lovely dog. And I'm hoping that she'll be very pleased, pleased with it. it spirits just really didn't work out because of the split season. And I, that was something I wasn't familiar with. I had never, you know, never heard of it or anything else, but I'm so glad we've been able to, to do it this way. We'll be really looking forward. For I'm, I'm excited, it. Arlene. There, it's been wonderful. It really has. The, uh, just the whole journey you know, I call it my odyssey, but it, it, as I say, it has been. All of you that I've met, that I've had the pleasure of, you know, enjoying your company at different times. And uh, Miss, of course, Louise, and, but I learned so much from her. I truly did. And when we were in Louisville, the night that they had given me the award, I had the strangest feeling, and I and I spoke it out loud, was that I felt it almost from my knees right up to my heart, was that Louise knew of it and was saying, well done. And that meant a lot because she was an extremely knowledgeable person. She truly was. That, oh, <laughs> Eileen just, just posted her question. Did I tell you all about when McDuff ate the steering wheel? McDuff loved to ride in the front seat and it was always such a thrill when we would be beside another car and they'd look over and then they'd see McDuff because he was a big dog there's no question about it so you know from the window up you just really saw probably from the middle of his of his chest but he wasn't very patient if you took too long in a store 
And we came out and he had chewed the whole steering wheel. Oh, no. And that was how, how we remembered it. And yet we couldn't really be angry with him because, you know, he wasn't in a crate, didn't enjoy crates at all. But that is, I'm glad Eileen did remind me of that because they will get into trouble. <laughs> There's no question about it. So, and then she said Doug drove it in that way. And he did. To Doug, that was just, you know, far for the course. It was his dog and he loved it. And, so it, you know, it misbehaved. He didn't know any better, <laughs> one way or another. And Eileen, I'm so glad that you got back in time. I wondered even if you'd get to your meeting tonight with the snow, because we haven't as much as you all have up north. We've only got about three inches, whereas they've got, I think, six, six or seven. So uh, those of you who live in a warmer climate enjoy because we're not going to see it for a little while. I just wanted to break and be good. And um, I'm certainly now able to get the vaccine and, and, and we'll all be together in Ohio, really come Labor Day weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I truly, truly am. So other than that, Lynn is leaving as well. But... Yep. Um, any plans, do you? Questions? If you do speak on up, um, Lynn Brown said, thank you so much for sharing your history, wonderful stories. And Joel said, thanks so much for sharing your time and knowledge. Joanne Render said, thank you. And Debbie uh, Harrison said, thank you for a very special evening. So, yep, that's all of the other comments that came through while we were. <laughs> well, it made it all worthwhile, Robin. It truly really did. It truly did. I threw all my notes off to the side. I really figured that was that was it. But no, I I can't thank you enough for your help in thank mentoring you. me on this. You are a treasure to the world and to this breed and to our community. And I'm so thankful that you are generous enough to share that with us because your knowledge. Well, I think Arlene. so many of the people, Robin, probably were hearing some of these stories for for the fifth and sixth time because they're now part of my repertoire. But I they am, really they did happen. There's no I, question about it. Do you mind hearing any of your stories five times or six? <laughs> Katie Wright has something to say. Katie, go ahead. Arlene, thank you for uh, sharing everything, and just thank you for being you. Sure thing. Well, I'm looking forward to this. I really, really am. In fact, did you get to see the pictures of Duty? I did. He's adorable. Really, and a I temperament to go with it. So yeah. I think I think it's going to be a good a good one. I really do. Yeah. And as I say, I've got a puppy named. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Ted and I have talked about it. I'd love to have a Brody, a, a little boy. Um, uh -huh. We'll see. We'll see. I, I also think that, you know, though I use a cane, that puppies get, get used to canes and then they're very comfortable around them, you know, when you're in other situations. So that doesn't seem like a negative, you know, to me from that standpoint at all. But um, no, have you and Eileen talked where you know kind of which which way and when you're going to do this? <laughs> Where we are still working out the logistics, but um, I'm confident I've been in contact with my vet and, and we're going to make it work. Well, you went through that with Penny, Penny before. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be an old yes. man. That's for yeah. sure. Well, as I say, I'm looking forward to it too, Caitlin. I really yeah. am. And I, I, you know, in my note, I said, you know, how much I love the calendar. And I do. I knew right away oh. that you and your mom had done it because <laughs> it is so creative. It truly is. And even while you were just posting, you know, pictures with the mm -hmm. puppies, the, um, that was like the, you know, the Taj Mahal of dogdom for <laughs> all the toys and the things in the yard that they yeah. could play with and be challenged by. So I'm sure all of them have the same spirit spirit has because <laughs> she is very yeah. Yeah, and is now as well. So, yeah, this, as I say, it, when people, how can I put this? I think when people share a love of dogs, it's pretty indicative.
that they themselves carry a lot of those same attributes. And I've found that to be true. I really have with so many people over the, over the years. Some judges even, you can tell right away, do they really enjoy what they're doing? Do they really like the breed? And I've had several of the handlers that I've met over the years, not that they handled Molly or anybody else in my group, but who had said the same thing. They do a seminar or something and they watch these tentative judges and then they'll say, you're frightened, you know, you're afraid to the judge. And they'll say, yes, but we earn more money with this breed. And that's a hell of a reason to be judging dogs, to make more money. It's just as Colonel Bidet said, this is not about money. This is about dogs. But I have a feeling that not all of the judges feel that way. And I wish they did. I really did. And that's why the early ones, as I say, I feel very strongly about. Dorothy McDonald was such a unique, unique person. She's in California. She's in a, um, a nursing home. But uh, she's hanging in there, but a hound person. And I think that's also true, that people who like hounds, and especially scent hounds, are very much more patient, are very much more open to possibilities, you know, when traveling, that kind of thing. So there's many reasons for it. But I was amazed myself when I had this article, which I still have here. I mean, it was the utterly engaging otter hound. But when she said to see about the monarchy, that there is no other breed that has been owned and loved and hunted than the otter hound. And it goes that far back to William the Conqueror. So it, it's a treasure. It, it, it is a treasure that we need to to value and explain to people, you know, that it is. And sometimes I think we need to explain it to our judges because I don't think many of them are really aware of it and what they have there to look at. So on that note, as I say, I'm hoping this will all come to fruition. I really am, Kate. There's just, as I say, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Because yeah, if, if we go about it now, let's see, then what would be probably May? Hopefully. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. hopefully May then. Now that would be, that's a nice time to, to have a puppy. It really yeah. is as well. So uh, yeah, that and then, and then to be able to go to nationals. I think that those are my two big goals. For, the, for this year is that you have a healthy, healthy litter and that we get to get to nationals. Tad knows about it already. I figured I'd better put in my, <laughs> my appeal right now. He's so eager to get back to work. Illinois is really, they've, they've struggled with this positivity number thing. And being that he is with the casino, that has made it even a little more difficult, though he's in food service. But, um, I can tell he's champing at the bit to get back to work. I want to thank everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. Arlene, it was wonderful to see you again. Good I can't to see you, Charlie. It really is. I, I was tickled pink when I found out, you know, that you had Bev's, Bev's bitch. I really was because I knew once you had met Bev, you two were both going to really have a great experience. Oh. We look for, we've never met, so at Evan, some no, point we'll person. have to. We've talked on the phone. Uh, <laughs> well, now you know who Robin's been spending all her time with <laughs> in, in tutoring me, in no, teaching me how this works. He hasn't met, we have I've, not met Bev in met person. Bev. Just, just but, video chats yeah. and phone calls with Bev. Um, I want to just thank everybody who was participating tonight. I really, really appreciate all of the support we have from all of you always. Um, always feel free to join. Invite your buddies. It's, it's Anybody can come. You don't have to be a member of the club. Um, all you have to do is love dogs, especially otter hounds. And my, I just want to share with everybody. I know everybody heard it, but I want to share my favorite takeaway tonight 
by Marlene was we as human beings need to be more forgiving and more loving, just like our dogs. I love that. And that's such, that is just the truth. And I believe it with all my heart. I truly do, Robin. Yeah, with all my heart. There's no question about it that um, it makes so, us better people. It does. It really does. Thank you. Given the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, thank it you. Really does. With all of us. Carmi, do you have anything else to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her calls, Robin. And Carmi, you look wonderful. You really do. Now, whom do you have with you? I, I saw the dog, give you a, the dog give you a kiss. Yeah, she's really good at interrupting videos. Um, <laughs> that's Jojo. But, it is um, Jojo. It is Jojo. She has become a quote unquote apartment dog. But no, we, we go on daily walks and just enjoy each other's company. But um, as for the as for the talk, you know, I, I grew up with all of your stories. I enjoyed hearing all of your stories. You always had new ones when I came and saw you at dog shows. And I think that, you know, that message of positivity and optimism and everything, it goes really far. It goes really far. And, well, and I, much of it comes from the dogs, Carmi, really, it does. They don't think in terms of, of anger or of anything else. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why we can't do the same. Mm -hmm. We all have different viewpoints, different opinions. They can be shared, but they can also then be digested and looked at more closely. Yeah, there's, as I say, we've got, we still as a human race have a lot to learn, a lot <laughs> to learn. So I'm, I hope to be a part of it. I really do. So uh, as I say, you no, know, this, this whole experience for as worried as I was about it. And then so put out about this thing about Microsoft, you know, having their own Zoom because they didn't want to come or they did want to compete. I guess that was the, the idea, but they made it much more difficult on my computer. So I'm going to write a letter. I really am. I, I feel it's, it's, it'll be worthy of it at this juncture. <laughs> well, I can so, tell you, what I is agree. your weather like there, Carmi? Oh, what geez. is your weather right now? Uh, we How have much snow. We had probably six to seven inches of snow today. <laughs> uh, I drove through it my, with my very tiny Honda Fit up the uh, hill and dale of the back roads of Wisconsin. Uh, but I made it to work and back, so that's a plus. <laughs> but, <Good. laughs> fingers crossed for warmer days. I mean, I mean, we're heading into February, but at least it's not as bad as Michigan. <laughs> yeah, but I, one of, you know, one of the nicest things about tonight has been the fact that you d we didn't have to wear masks, that the smiles could be there, you know, the, it just was about as close as we can get to being a family, I think, really. And very often, that's how I felt about it, too, that we were one big, big family. So, and where, where we've had issues, we've resolved them, you know, that that's been part of it, goes along with it. And I can think back, in fact, I thought of that earlier, you know, when we worked on the standard and um, it became quite obvious that Mr. Hubble did not care for the dogs in his drawings. It was quite evident that he wasn't seeing what we were seeing. And so when we had to make those final decisions and Louise had to contact him on it, I think he questioned it, but there was no question about it. You know, you, you can tell. You really can. I feel that way about women when they are judging otter hounds. If they pull the head and then have to wipe their hands on their skirts, all of a sudden, I don't. I'm not sure that I like that particular judge that uh, that well. But um, as I say, the uh, they're they're learning too. I guess I have to use that approach to it. But they've got a lot to learn about our breed. They they do. So hopefully we'll be able to get back to that too, you know, where we are able to have those kinds of educational uh, meetings at Louisville and, and our nationals for everybody. And I understand that Westminster is going to be held outdoors this year out on in, uh, New York. That would be a lovely one to attend. But uh, 
if I've got a puppy, I'm not going to be going anywhere. So we'll see. Ted, Ted's excited about it too, but um, we'll see. Time will, time will tell. But other than that, no, you all be, be careful and be safe by all means. Okay. All right, then. Okay. Are we adjourned then for tonight? We can be done. And thank you very much to you, Arlene. I really appreciate your time. And your Stay us. safe, please. Come here. I enjoyed it so much. I truly Hello. did. Hello, Good night, everybody. Oh, look at here. Hello. Look at here. Hi. Oh, yes. There you are. I wondered if you'd get back in time because you said you had a, me a, a meeting tonight. I, it's um, Higgins Obedience Class. Oh, I see then. How much snow do you have, Eileen? I've got about six or seven inches, I suppose. Six or seven. Well, we didn't get it. We only got about three earlier today, but they say it's coming back again. So we'll add on to, on to that then. So, but it, it was great to see everybody. It really, really was. Yeah, the, you know, I'd forgotten all about the steering wheel. <laughs>